You have found something new, something wild, something exciting, something that you're going to like. You have found the Dub Network, and we are very, very glad you have. Hey, everybody, I'm Mike Reiner. Welcome inside here. The Dub Network is a new podcast scene that some of us affiliated with Vocal have been working on. The Mom Game will be there. My own podcast, Your Dark Companion, will be there. But I'm sitting here today with a veritable rogues gallery of cats. <laughs> and every one of these guys are going to have their own podcast where they can come on here, talk about whatever they want, get their own guests. These guys all have a wide range of people that they have known in the games that they played, and the podcast will be theirs to do whatever they want with. And right now, we probably should say hello to each one of them. On my left, he is the host of the Big Head Pod. He is the former Ranger great, Kevin Minch. I'm about great, but thank you. Thank you. I'd say you're great. I'd say you're pretty I will great. Too, man. Yes. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yes, hey, you, may have pleasure, seen, Mike. you may have seen Kevin on your Dark Companion already, and he is here to do his own thing. On his left is a man that I crossed paths with roaming the halls of Cumulus all those years. He is a former cowboy great, Nate Newton. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, man. Uh, wow. Just glad to be here. And, uh... <laughs> you excited to do this? <laughs> Well, I, said, I, just don't, I just don't want to say nothing right now because I've been listening to the pre. So, you know, I'll wait. Yeah, let me tell you, you guys have already missed the good stuff. Yeah, yeah. And on his left, another survivor of your dark companion. Just a couple of weeks ago, That's my true. longtime pal, my guy. Yes. You see him doing color on Mavericks telecast. He is the great Derek Harper. Hey, y'all. <laughs> Representing basketball. <laughs> yeah, I'm here. Excited. Let's go. Let's get it on. And on his left, the guy that I know the least You're of lucky. these four. <laughs> Consider on. yourself fortunate. Everybody told me that you were a great guy. If I knew you, I would love you. And now I see what they're talking about. He's a former Stars great, Craig Ludwig, the host. Loves. Um, let's see. Yeah. Suds with Luds, not Luds with Suds. <laughs> See, apparently Sunday they was. don't know shit about me already. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't pick that name though. They will. Oh, That's a great name. <laughs> no, I I understand why they come by that. So I'm super pleased to be sitting here with these three guys. So I'm looking forward to it. You should be super pleased to be because these are three great cats. Yeah. All right, let's go around the horn a little bit and tell me what made you guys want to do this. What made you guys want to dip your toes into the Podcast waters. I, I don't know if it's an order in, in which I'll just jump go, in. But I personally, I, I think a platform like this gives you an opportunity to one express yourself. Mm -hmm. And when I say express yourself, I don't mean it in one sense. Not just basketball, not just football, not just sports. But yeah. this gives you a platform to talk about society and everything else that's going on in our world. It's a great way to let people get to know you. Absolutely. Outside of dribbling a basketball, yeah. dribbling it out a clock or whatever the case might be, man, you you, you can't ask for a better opportunity to, uh, I, I'm not a big politic guy. I, mm -hmm. I, I was taught at a young age not to talk religion and politics. I kind of follow that mantra, but this platform, if you choose to, will put you in a position to do whatever it is that you want to do. Who else wants to field that question? Me, I, I just uh, just meeting you guys for the first time. You know, Not the I've first met, time we met. No, no, <laughs> just saying. You know, as a group, as a group, yeah. three to, three other sports besides mine, and the way we think, and the way we articulate what how we feel about the past, the now, and the future, and, and the technology that uh, is the way it raises our kids, and the way we do things, and how we feel about it. And, and I like that, that we can just cover all bases. You know, we all each have our own podcast, 
but a lot of stuff like I don't I don't know the hockey world well and to hear you guys talk about it and relate it where well, I can understand it the baseball world same thing it's like I, I you know I can, I got an opinion about basketball you know because from from Florida we yes. think we know everything right but this, <laughs> we do yeah so I, I'm I'm looking forward to this for well, us well honestly for me when Tom had told me about this it was the concept and he told me that you were hopefully going to be involved and, you know, get to this point. And then when I heard about these three guys, and, and I agree with what both said, is that now we can cover our respective sports, but I think you can cross over a lot of things. Just mm -hmm. the, the few minutes that we were talking before, it's funny, like we, the games are all different, mm -hmm. but there's so many things that, because we're all kind of in the same era and, and relating to the younger players now that what we went through and what coaches went through and how you work with kids and I think we all do and you know we're around them and we watch and mm -hmm. listen and so it, it's different and and so we know everything is different in the world that we came up in the way I was coached is completely different the way I coach now mm -hmm. and if you want to get results you have to be able to adapt and change and I think mm -hmm. we'll find that that we're going to have to adapt and change, you know, our thoughts too to what we all do. Kevin, and that's <clears throat> just piggybacking on what all three of the guys said, the interactions that we have as athletes in the area between, uh, you know, I'm a play baseball guy, but I love hockey. I love football, you know, basketball side. I'm starting to get into basketball more. So we're able to, <laughs> to, to see things. <laughs> I, just, I, never cut. I like I'm a college basketball guy, NFL guy. Dude, so, I mean, it's, I feel it's, right here already. <laughs> so we, it's the first, so first, so first topic we talk about. Ball it. hit it, so it don't matter. <laughs> <laughs> don't matter. But just being able to sit down, sit down and, as people say, be able to chop it up. And just mm -hmm. people want to know what guys are up to, um, you know, going through just what's happening in sports in the world. Like you talked about, that's how things are changing and evolving from how we were raised to how things are now. And to have fun with it have stories behind it. That's what people want to hear. They don't Absolutely. want to hear the same yeah. commentary, right? The whole scripted. This is this is just unscripted, unfiltered, and it's just guys being guys and doing or whoever's on set just being able just to be yourself and to know, hey, what are you guys doing these days, right? You know, they know the stories from mm -hmm. our playing careers, but they don't know behind the scenes stuff. And this maybe leads them to that. And Mike, what about the possibilities of this whole thing? Oh, the possibilities of You've this. You've been in this industry since God was a cowboy. Yes. So you, I'm assuming you could, you have all these ideas. I've got many ideas because I've already dipped my toes into the podcast waters and I've found that all these things that you guys are saying about it or what you think it might be are for the most part quite true. I mean, you can get in here and riff on whatever you care to riff on. There are no boundaries here. And that's really the neat thing about it. Now, as far as my podcast goes, I've been really fortunate where along the way, I've met a lot of really fascinating people. And a lot of those guys have agreed to come on my podcast and, and we've, you know, maybe sports, maybe not, but see, that's it. It can be whatever you want it to be. People think of me as a sports guy or no, he's a music guy. He's this, that, whatever. What I am is neither fish nor fowl. And the goal <laughs> probably for you guys should be to show everybody that that's what you are too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I mean, think about how many of us played more than just the sport that we're here for, right? To be able to talk about when we were playing growing up. On Florida, you probably didn't play much hockey. No. I'm sure. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, <laughs> but Luds and I grew up, I mean, I grew up playing hockey. I love, you know, up in the North, so she did the mm -hmm. same thing. Football, yes. Yeah. So, I mean, we are able to... Yeah interact and just mesh those things and stories. I mean, and the amount of people that we know just from our sport, and now you have this collaboration to be able to, the, the, the sky's limitless. Yeah, and, and, and what's interesting about that, that's not the same anymore. You can't do that. You, you don't even get a choice to play more than one sport now. We were talking earlier about how they take one of the other from you is what they're trying to do. If you play like Deion Sanders, for example, football, Baseball, he couldn't do that now. They would stop it. So there are a lot of things that have changed. And um, to your point, which I, I think it'll be a lot of fun just to kind of dive into all of those things. Guys take private planes. 
Now we flew out of Love Field and DFW all mm-hmm. the time. Mm-hmm. Guys, six eleven, seven foot tall, no exception. Yet all of the young players now they stay hurt. They're load managing and all yeah. of this kind of stuff. So I don't know. There, there is a lot to dive into for sure. I'm so, I'm so interested to hear what they have to say because I, my best opportunity actually in, in sports came from baseball and football. Right, right. I never played basketball. I'm sorry. And there were good reasons for it. Yeah. <laughs> if you ever see me, um, <laughs> but, and again, I go back to the one sport thing. Mm-hmm. It's a pet peeve of mine. And we make kids today, as we were talking about, we make kids today make choices at Mm -hmm. 12, 13, 14 years old to choose this sport or that sport. For us, it's a job and it's okay to do it for 10 or 11 months a year. Mm -hmm. But for kids that are, you know, growing up and they don't get, they they are one sport athletes. And, but they're really good at it. I mean, they are, but I do think that the hand eye, the physical contact, the jumping and catching, all the, the, all the things that come along with all these make you a better player all-around player. You can have your field, but all those other elements make you a really good player. Seems like kids are really good at it. They're one-sport guys and do it all year round. But it just also seems like that takes so much of the fun of being a kid, the fun of sports and being a kid and playing sports when you're a kid. Seems like that really drains a good bit of that. Does it, you get, does, don't you think that it kind of pigeonholes you too? It, like if I'm 14 and I'm going to play football, do I know if I can play baseball or hockey or basketball? You know what I mean? That, that is the great... This is this is what I, I try to tell people. If parents would stop focusing on us, mm-hmm. I'm talking about professional players, we as kids had stars that we... Our mom and dad didn't choose our stars or our, our, our sports. We chose. So we wanted to do everything our friends was doing. Mm-hmm. If they was playing basketball at the time, I played basketball. I couldn't play basketball, but I played it. You know, I, I, I was a part of it. I was, I was the last guy. Oh, I played baseball. <laughs> I didn't play hockey, but to your yeah. point, yeah, I played and everything. So if it was football season, we did that. If it was basketball season, we mm-hmm. did that. If it was track, we did that. And now, uh, Somewhere along the line, we got specialized. The AAU started basketball first. Then baseball took a life to it. And I'm mm-hmm. talking about coming from the South. Mm-hmm. You know, basketball first. Then baseball took its own meaning. Then football here in Texas takes its own. And so, it, you know, parents looking at, quit looking at, we, we are 1% or less than 1%. Mm-hmm. All of us made it, and we are less than 1%. Mm-hmm. And so now you as a parent or you as a kid saying, hey, man, I'm going to be like heart. So now the next, you know, five days in a row, all you're doing is playing basketball. How do you rest? How do you, how do you, you know, it is what it is. They're like you said, they're not, they're not given a chance to be a kid. I I know where, where Luds and I grew up, we have seasons. Here, there's one season, right? Mm -hmm. Hot. Yeah. yeah. (laughs) So we were, so we would have a fall sport, a winter sport, and a Mm -hmm. spring sport. So we... And that helps with the body, like you're talking about, adjust different muscle groups mm-hmm. because they become, like you said, want sport specific. So then muscles aren't used. I noticed it with kids, putting them in a position, a normal athletic position for us as an athlete, but their bodies are shaking. And you see that. And they go, mm-hmm. well, what, you, what is that? I said, it's a muscle that you've never used because yeah. you're yeah. one sport. But you I, know, hockey guys do the soccer stuff, right? Yeah. Well, b- before a game. So, I mean, just little stuff, right? It, it, I'm sure basketball probably does the same kind of yeah. thing where it's, but you're right. It's just that one sport. I tell my kids when the season's done, go be a kid. Get out of here. Yeah. Six weeks. Yeah, get yeah. your mind. Just be get normal. in trouble. That's Nobody right. wants to get in trouble anymore. That, I think that's part of it too. Sports. Nobody wants to get hurt or get in trouble. Yeah, I, I, I think sports. I think they, one thing we'll all agree on though is that no matter what the sport <laughs> is, it all there, there there is one common denominator, and that's the hard work part. That's dedicating yourself. The dedication part, I think. Hockey, I've never, I don't know anything about it. Well, I shared a locker when I was in New York with uh, Messier. He was 11, I was 11. So we had that in common. That was my first hockey game was when I moved to New York to play with the Knicks. But I think the one thing we all have in common is that we were willing to make a sacrifice to be the best that we could be. And I don't care what it is, tennis, golf, it's about reps. And I think that's what kids have to do. You were talking about parents. I don't think parents really understand the work that it yeah. takes. I mean, you got to be dedicated. I couldn't hit a fastball if 
for a million dollars. I could not hit a fastball. I used to run out of the plate. Hey, off the plate. I, I'm telling you. I, I got to tell you, sir, real quick. Yeah. Got to tell you. My kid, my oldest boy, named after me, the third. Yeah. He was, I was had the thing going at 62 miles an hour, the pitching the little thing that comes yeah. out of the. Yeah. And I'm like, son, keep your eye on the ball, hand out <laughs> coordination. You. Daddy, show me. <laughs> Oops. Boy, well, after about 15 pitches, I say, son, you're doing a hell of a job. <laughs> yeah, I think, so. I, think, I think people think, I think people think, like, we're watching Steph Curry right, right now, yeah. right? You watch the great Lamar Jackson and all, yeah. these, all these incredible things that people do. I think people think you just bump into that kind of shit. Right, and right. you don't. <laughs> yeah. you, know, you don't luck up and fucking hit nine threes in a row. You know <laughs> right, what I mean? Right. That's not luck. That's being in the gym. That's putting in your time. What What are you talking about? I'm watching on TV and I'm automatically better. That's <laughs> right. what the philosophy is, right? Yeah, All exactly you got to do right. is get, get out your man all oh, man, and you can do yeah, that. Yeah. 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 And it's yeah. not the case, man. So I, the, the dedication it takes to be a professional, man, I don't think people – people really realize the work that you put in. And that's why I knew I was good because I knew I put the work in during my downtime. Do you have the same habits as when you played? Some some of the same habits? Oh, because when you talk about sacrifice, I the word that comes to mind is discipline. Like yeah. we have to have a certain, di- but I'm still on the same fucking routine yeah. and I yeah. can't get away from it. You know, like afternoon naps and all that kind of stuff. I fall asleep at like <laughs> one third, right after all my children, I go to sleep yeah. away for a little while. <laughs> the only thing I try to avoid is that carb loading right now. That's oh, yeah. What, yeah. That's what yeah. I try to avoid yeah. in my yeah. routine, but all that pasta. <laughs> Yeah, you see that right? I'm, good for I'm like, okay, yeah, let me get this out just in case we talk about it. Yeah, you, you, you don't want to get away because you don't want want to be unprepared. Yeah, yeah. You know, you know, right. you, you want to stay, you know, relevant. You know, and then people only see the TV stuff, right? They don't see the other six, eight hours that go mm-hmm. into it of That's being right. at the ballpark at one thirty and leaving right. at eleven or twelve, wow. and then getting up the next day to do it again. They just see, oh, well, your guys are on TV. They don't see. Right, playing a game in Seattle and, dr- and having to fly to Atlanta oh, that but, night and getting it. Yeah, and people yeah. don't see that. And, so why got a low management? It, baseball <laughs> is a complete, it's a complete different animal than I was talking the other night about this about how we we've, we've got to have a short term memory because you got to yeah. get up and do it again, right? That's I mean, right. you guys had it. You had yeah. all week to look at the tape. And go, how we screw up? Like, I got time. Right, I got to go to bed. I got to get up in three hours. How many right. games? How many games? One hundred sixty-two games in one hundred eighty days. One hundred sixty-two games. You, wow. You better have a short term memory. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's and incredible. then think about guys. I mean, and what like you said, the travel of going from Boston to San Francisco, That's right? right. And doing this, but series. you guys get to unpack, right? Yes. You go into a city for what? Three, four games? Three, yeah. yeah. Yeah, so at least you get to take your stuff out of your suitcase and put it in. If You, you probably don't. but That don't even be, sound right. I wear the no, same bro. stuff. I just, I just <laughs> send it down to the iron nest and it's back up. Yeah. Yeah. You, know, anyway, you know, you try to make that simple, but that don't even sound right. <laughs> you live it out of a suitcase, bro. Yeah. That ain't comfortable. You know what I'm saying? It, it's yeah. not. It's But that's that's the hardest part is dealing with that and having to get up. Time changes as well, mm-hmm. right? And then I know I'm hot, you guys have you a morning skate and then – I don't, in the NFL, I don't know what, how you guys no, do, we don't do it. Do you have shoot arounds before oh, yeah. the morning? Yeah, it just depends yeah. on whether or not you had a game the night before. Of course, you get in late. You get into shit Chicago right after the game. You get to finally get to the hotel. It's two thirty, three o'clock in the morning. How the hell are you going to shoot around the next morning? You can't. It's not humanly possible. So I don't know. I, I, I just think there's a misconception as to what it takes to be a professional. I really do. How many games y'all play? Play eighty two. Like so, that's you, you play. NBA. That's a you lot play of games, like man. yeah. The pre the you know you're all getting ten preseason games okay. or whatever. Not everybody plays that eighty two, and then whatever you do in the playoffs, you can play another twenty eight in the playoffs if you're lucky. So uh, y'all have back to backs too, right? Oh yeah, yeah. Three and four, you know. So that four See, and seven, that, that, that kind of stuff. And and the, and the what you talk about the morning stuff. Right. Pre game skates. Mm-hmm. It's just a total waste of time. So but you, you know what that is. Yeah. That's coaches being control freaks. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I don't speak for other sports, but yeah, hockey coaches want to know where the hell you are, what are you yeah. doing. Want to you see know, you. You want to know, okay, we come in for a morning skate and not so much anymore, but it was more where, wow. when we get out there and skate around, I'm going to skate up close to Ludwig and see what time he got in last night. You know what I mean? <laughs> I mean, I didn't know that until later, but you know what I mean? They want, they're, they're control freaks. They want to you know. Their way of looking in on yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. That's their way. I know they get the curfews and all that kind of stuff, but... But I mean, you it's, guys have curfews. Oh yeah, See, we never had curfews. Yeah, we, we had curfew. Never. You did or didn't? We never. did. Yeah. We did, man. Yeah, and, uh, NBA, yeah we I, needed it, man. Mike, we, me. 
Yeah. yeah. We did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> On that note, yeah, this yeah. wasn't a good idea. Yeah, we did. Yeah. 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 Mike had all his receiver crew. We wanted to have a lineup the next day. Yeah, we needed yeah. to care. But, but you know what? We the thing, you, you talk about being able to see people on TV. You do see the superstars, right? You'll see the you know, Jordan, all those kind of yeah. things, right? guys like that. And my heart, the hardest time with all that stuff, it's just like optionals. Like we'll have optionals sometime. We'll have an optional morning skate, mm-hmm. optional practice. I've been to those. Everybody yeah, I've been to that. I know. And you know what? I've been, in every, I've been in every one of them, right? Yeah. yeah. I don't get options. That's the part that bothered me is that I understand that the big dogs, like they get their TV shows. Right. Right. They don't understand that the rest of us have to work harder than them. They're right. blessed. They're blessed with their talent. Right. I have to work twice as hard to stay in the lineup the next night. Like mm. my whole goal when I played, whether it was from game one to game 1200, it was you work today to get your name on the board tomorrow morning to see that yeah. when the lineup's on there. And so, and I got so pissed off and, and I didn't say it. I had a, my D coach was a, also a coach of mine in college. I'm full of I know you get a little mad. Oh, I hate it. <laughs> I hate it. <laughs> I fucking hate it. But so, you know, and it's, I'm in my, I don't know, it's 14th, 15th right. year and sitting on the plane and, you know, the coaches come back and they'll mm-hmm. go, optional, optional. There's Ludwig. Uh, see you in the morning. Optional, optional. <laughs> and I and the one one time after thousand some games, I went, uh, fuck me. Yeah, and yeah. Wills kind of turned around and looked at me and just kind of kept on going up the plane. And then he came back about 10 minutes later and says, come on up and talk to me. I said, okay. Went up and sat to him next to him. And he goes, what's that all about? I said, Wills, I said, you know, we work twice as hard to stay in the lineup, to play our 12, 15, 16 minutes where these right. guys, and, and no matter how many mistakes they make, They're going back on the ice. I understand it. They're the ones that win the game. I Mm -hmm. get it. But once in a while, it's nice to just come by and throw us an optional. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's nice to say, oh, man, he appreciates what I do. Now I And so get off the plane. He's waiting for me. And I'm thinking, oh, this isn't over. Yeah. He goes, Lud's got an optional tomorrow. I said, thanks. (laughs) And I was there the next morning for skate. And all I wanted to hear is he had an option. You know what I mean? Does he sometimes throw us a bone? Yeah. You know, so. You're talking about throwing bones. We were talking earlier. Uh, as we were getting ready for this, and we were talking about how, to your point, superstars get treated differently, mm-hmm. right? I mean, you you have to swallow that. Yeah. You know, Patrick Ewan in New York, he wasn't treated like Derek Harper. He, he was taken care of a little bit more. I'm sure it's the same in football. Troy Aikman, I, I remember the story where uh, somebody got cut. Yeah. They were asleep in the yeah. film yeah. with Dude, the Cowboys, right? Yeah, yeah. he fell back. asleep. Yeah, and that question, was Jimmy. Yeah. yeah, that was Jimmy. That's exactly right. The question came, what would you have done if it was Troy? I said, wake him up. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right? You, you wake his ass up yeah, and tell, him, right. tell him to get here, right? Yeah. So, I mean, it, it, it just goes to show you that you got to swallow a lot to your point, Lex. I mean, you, you got to swallow whatever your role is. Pat Riley used to sit us down on the floor in New York, and the question was, what your role was. He would explain the role of each and every player. So there's no question about what your role is, right? He'd get to me. Can you get me a 20 a game? No, you can't. Can you get me 20? No, you can't. Well, get the fucking people that can get the basket <laughs> the ball. Right. You know, and yep. it, it just goes to show you that there's a lot that comes with trying to be a profession, professional athlete. And if you think everything is, to your point, everything is going to be the same and everybody's going to get treated yep. The same. It's just not the way it works. A lot of times at that I'll, level, I, I'll tell kids if they can handle it. You know, you got to know your players. Mm-hmm. But like, you know what your role is? Your role is is when you get to go out there, you give me a minute shift, thirty second shift, and you're not even giving it to me. You're giving it to our top guys so they can get a rest and get back out there. Mm-hmm. Like that's what we're doing. We're giving them a break. So, and I knew that when I was a player. I'm like. Okay, we're down a goal. Why am I going out there? Like, there's no reason for me to go out there. I'm not going to get a goal, but <laughs> Zuboff is tired. So I got to go out there. I got to survive. It's the last, you know, three, four minutes of game. We're down a goal. And all I'm doing is I'm waiting. I'm looking at the benches. I'm on my <laughs> shift. And if Zuby's still is sitting there like that, I'm like, fuck, I'll stay here another 10 seconds. And then when he's sitting up straight, okay, I can get off, let him get back on and tie the game and win the game. I mean, that's all about what we talked about earlier, yeah, too, yeah, about lots. knowing your role. Yeah, that's yeah, the big part in sports yeah, for that's, me. That's team tough sports. to swallow, too, sometimes. Yep, it is. Yep. All right, let me take you guys back to when you were kids. I mean, you're all yes, very accomplished. Time, Am I the youngest one here, by the way? Probably. 
Yeah, I'm not okay. telling my age. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the same old. age. The internet's all lies, too, <laughs> so we can't we can do it. See. <laughs> no, it's all and good. I'm certainly recusing myself from this conversation. <laughs> but how old were you when you started to get the idea that you were a little bit better at this stuff than a lot of the other boys? It took me a long time. Late yeah, bloomer. you were kind of a late bloomer, yeah, weren't because, you? Yeah, uh, because... I only play, and I, and I kind of, I guess I should be a little embarrassed, but I'm not. I, I, I play because my friends play. You know, in Florida, he'll tell you, you know, yeah. that's what we, you know, hey, man, sure. what you, heart, yeah, yeah, heart, what wrong you, with that? Yeah, heart, what you doing? Well, I'm going to play football. Yeah. And if he was my best friend, well, I was going to play football. It didn't matter if you played tennis, you were going yeah, to play football. Yeah, okay. yeah. so yeah. when I got to college, uh, I just, I, now, one issue I did have is I couldn't stand for nobody to beat me. If I decided that I liked it to do something, that compet you know, so I got into pros. That's when I realized yeah. I was a grown man when I was like, I'm better than this dude. Yeah. Now, I remember yeah. when you first got here. Nick, yeah. And it seems like you were added to the team like late in training camp. Yeah, or maybe yeah I came in two weeks left in training camp. Yeah. yeah. Cowboys and, my team. Yeah. And I remember yeah. that there was just a little blurb in the bottom of somebody's yeah. note. The Cowboys have picked up an offensive lineman, Nathaniel Newton. Probably won't make because he, it, the average offensive lineman weighed 265 and I was 340. So, I, <laughs> yeah, you read the same one I read. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> he wouldn't make it. Yeah. <laughs> and so I thought, okay, well, that's, that's great. It. They got a new offensive lineman. Yeah. And, and, and uh, he won't be here let's long. Go on, yeah, let's go on about our business. But... Um, I mean, like, how old were you, Kevin, when you first started to see that you were a little bit better than the other kids? I mean, that's it's a tough question. Because where I grew, I grew up, we played 19 baseball games in a season in high school. Yeah. And at 22, if you made it to the final, because it just still right. weather. We couldn't get outside till April right. and do stuff. So, you know, we, we talked about this the other night about going to college draft or in or. Uh, uh, in college or going to or into college or out of high school. Yeah. These high school kids are 18 with money to go out and they've got no structure. I went to college, you know, started to pick it up a little bit more. I mean, I I, I was kind of, I could tell it was on that cusp, but then something maybe just clicked one summer. I think I had a great summer my freshman year of college. And then uh, right from there, it was one of those, maybe I can do this. Mm -hmm. I go out oh. to Team USA. Guys in college, where I played through maybe 85 miles an hour, I go out to Team USA, guys are throwing 98, 100. I'm like, what in the hell? That is an aspirin. How am I supposed to hit that thing? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Get out there and take a few. Guys throws one, 99. I put a swing on. I'm like, oh, maybe this, maybe I can do this. Right, right. Go to the Cape, go play up there in the summer, the top summer league. Mm -hmm. You know, kind of struggle, learn with a wooden bat. And, right. You know, and here I am. So it's one of those, It's I don't think it's one of those things that just clicks. It's somebody said, yeah. hey, you know, hey, Nate, you try football? This is fun, maybe. And then you get that that itch of, mm -hmm. well, you're not beating me, right? So right. now I've got motivation. Right. I had brothers as well that yeah. I wanted to be better than. Yeah, mm -hmm. They both in college, both had rotator cuff surgery. I said, when I was 15, I went to the outfield. I always tell people the harder they hit it, the farther back I want to get. So, <laughs> smart. <laughs> yeah, you smart. Done. Yeah. 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 So my arm lasted an extra 20 years. I still have a, I can play catch now. My brothers, I remember after he had surgery, he couldn't throw the ball from here to Luds. It would go through the wall. That's how... And I just scared me of going. Wait, I, no, I'm not doing that. If I if I'm going to survive, I need to do this. So, and it was one of those that just you had the motivation. I had something that just clicked, and then just wanted to be better than. And that's yeah. what that's what kind of drove me. How about you, Derek? Oh man, I, I, I'm with Kev, man. That, that's a tough question. <clears throat> and I've always been a pretty confident kid. I, shit, I was six two when I was in the eighth grade, so I was bigger than everybody else. You know what I mean? And just had that size advantage is what I had. I wasn't afraid to get hit and get banged around because I was so much bigger than the rest of the kids. So seventh, eighth grade, I, I was a football guy. Played mm -hmm. wide receiver. Not bad. Slow as molasses. I, I, I think that, uh, that would have hindered me a little bit. But then I get to, uh, I get to the eighth grade. I, I was supposed to go to one high school, but I, I was – Summoned to go somewhere else. I was pushed over to, to go to a different high school. The high school coach there was a, a big time high school basketball coach in the state of Florida, Florida Andrews. 
And uh, I work with him, work with him, work with him, start getting better, start improving as a player. And by the time my freshman year ended, I thought I was pretty special as a player because I worked my hiney off. I mean, I, I worked and I worked and I worked, jump rope, ran around, jogging, trying to get in better shape than everybody else. So I, I my freshman year in high school, I thought I had an opportunity to at least earn myself a scholarship mm -hmm. because growing up poor, man, you if you don't get a scholarship, you don't go to school. That's, that's what right. that's, that was my case anyway. And when I started hearing my coach talk about getting scholarships and things of that nature, being able to put myself through through college, that's when I something clicked then for me to take it a little more serious, mm -hmm. um, to dedicate yourself a little bit more to try and improve. That's when it started to happen for me, man. And they were they mm -hmm. they were knocking at the door, man. After my uh, my freshman year, colleges were trying to uh, trying to see who Derek Harper was. And it all came together. I mean, it, it, it was such a, uh, so quick and so surreal when you start thinking about going to Notre Dame or UCLA or, mm. you know, Michigan is looking at Derek Harper. And I'm just like, huh, how does this work? What is this, what is this all about? But it, it, it happened early for me. I just, uh, I, basketball came natural for me. Yeah. And I was just able to go out there and uh, make it happen, man. I saved you for last. Craig, because I understand how guys matriculate in, ho in the hockey world the least. <laughs> I mean, I, I know what these guys are talking about, but for you guys, like, it, you know, is, is matriculate a derogatory word? <laughs> it could be. I'm not it really sure be. what the fuck that means. <laughs> <laughs> Alexis, you speak English, spell it, please. Alexis, Alexis, yeah. wow. Use it in a sentence, yeah. right? Wow. Wow. I'm di diagramming on the chalkboard here. We, we, we're going to need a board if we're going to do this again. <laughs> yeah. uh, you know what? For me, I'll answer that question. Never. I, I never thought I could play. And I never never thought of it as a sport, as a career. Ooh. Not once. I we had an, I played, you know, I played the other sports. My I was telling Mitchy, I said, my, I thought my best opportunity for anything and never thought about a pro life was baseball. I got invited to the Cincinnati Reds camp when I was a senior in high school, when I was mm -hmm. done. And I never went because I'm like, I'm never going to play there. That was my opinion about everything. And I, I got some letters from hockey for D3 schools. Mm -hmm. And I had one in my home state in Superior, Wisconsin. And I went there with my buddy and drove and met the coach. And I'll keep it short. We were at, sitting at a big boys restaurant. And I have all places, they, but he wouldn't let me have a beer. And it was, eight, it was 18 of them. You can drink at 18. <clears throat> anyway, um, and I was sitting, my best friend sitting next to each other and coach is sitting across from me. And, you know, he says, I understand you're, you know, in school, all I took was auto mech and shop and woods and all that kind of stuff. And um, we have a great in industrial uh, program here. And I didn't even know what that meant at the time. And I'm like, okay. And he goes, well, and he talked about school and stuff like that. And he goes, you know, what be, I'm not sure if you can make a hockey team. And I kicked my buddy underneath the table like that. And, and Harker got up and he had to go to the bathroom. I said, Jack, let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> so while he's in the bathroom, I leave. <laughs> We're gone. And I get home and I'm like, I'm not listening to this guy. And so anyway, at home and uh, the, the next year, I'm watching on TV. Uh, I'm watching the University of North Dakota is playing uh, Minnesota and in the national championship. Mm -hmm. And in the second period, I'm sitting at my best friend's house with his dad, who was our high school hockey coach. And I turn around, and to this day, I have no idea why. And I said, whoever uh, loses this game, I'm going to go try out for that team. I just figured the team that lost, you don't want to make changes. I didn't know shit about what was going on. Right. So North Dakota loses. My coach that was there had gone to school in North Dakota, made a call and said, hey, I got this kid, you know, I'd like to come up and walk on, try out. So I... I now I get in the car and I drive there. I have no place to stay. I didn't register in school. There's six other guys in the housing office that have no place to stay. I ended up living in a house with these five or six idiots, right. and that didn't turn out well. Uh, and I played and made the team. Uh, we won a national championship that year, and I'm still not thinking right. nothing about hockey mm -hmm. in the career. Not were not you a whatsoever. star there? Were you one of the better players on the team? In my opinion, no, but I made the all con. I mean, we won a national championship. I was on an all whatever team at the end of the year. And I still get in my car, drove 500 miles home, hung out with my buddies all summer. And then I go back and work at a hockey school there in July. 
And the head coach is driving down the street, and I'm there, and he goes, Ludwig, in my office. And he just keeps on driving. I'm thinking, man, what did I do last mm -hmm. night? I know I'm <laughs> dealing with a bunch of kids, and I'm thinking, mom and shit here. <laughs> I get in there, and he goes, uh, you know about the NHL draft? I said, no. And he goes, uh, well, it was yesterday. I said, okay, good. And he goes, um, you were drafted. I said, oh, yeah? And he goes, yeah. And, he, and I said, uh, I said, good. And I got up and I started to walk out. And he goes, do you want to know why or by who? And I said, oh, yeah, who? <laughs> he goes, Montreal. Now, I've heard of the Montreal Canadians when right. I played, but I'm like, oh, okay. And I just walked out. And I'm thinking, never am I ever going to play pro number mm -hmm. one or am I going to play for that team especially? And you know what? It came back. Um, the One year later, we win national championship again. And um, it was same coach, came in the locker room, guys are celebrating, and he, come here, I want, I want you to meet somebody. I walk out in the hall, and all the guys are, I'm, I'm kind of like, a, you know, dragging somebody away from the party, right? I'm like, what, what's going on here? And he points to this guy down the end of the hall, and he goes, I want you to meet your new agent. And I said, huh? He goes, yeah, he goes, I got no more classes for you to take here at school, time for you to turn pro. Mm -hmm. And because I was, my first grade point, whatever, was .08. Oh, that didn't go over well. <laughs> I didn't even know you can get a point zero eight. So you might not have been the most dedicated student. You're telling no, us no, not not whatsoever. And so it was I, one of those kind of things. I've got, I've got, I've got, yeah. I, this I found my equal. I've got the movie. Yes. This, is, it's a, this is a combination: Animal House and Young Blood. Yeah. Right, yeah. that's what I'm yeah. picturing uh, right now, yeah. right? Because yeah, driving. but I did, you know, and that's why I said earlier, like my goal when I was pro to get my name on that board. In the morning when you come in for morning skate, I wanted to see my name on the board. I know I, may I survived a day. And that, but that's my attitude to this day. Like I play in three different leagues and I coach a U18 team. So I get to compete with these kids and at nights and, and I only want to go against the young guys because I still think I can you know, mm -hmm. play. But it's the competition, it's the competitiveness yeah. that we have. You never lose it. No, you don't. It, it's yeah. in you. And it's, I'm bad because I never let my kids win a thing growing up. Nothing. So like, he, they don't win. I don't care if they were four years yeah. old or 14. They weren't going to win a thing. Checkers, whatever. I'm, Nothing. I'm gonna, yeah. No, I, no not a thing. I, I I mean, they would play that mini stick hockey. Have you guys ever seen that in the house? You know, at eight, nine years old. One day I came home and I, I walked out and I'm like, I said to my wife, not anymore, but I said to my wife and I said, um, somebody's shooting a gun out here? And she's like, what are you talking about? I said, there's a hole in our living room window about this big. <laughs> They were playing with fucking marbles. Like that's what they weren't usually the, the smart kids take tape and they wad it up, right? And that's what they use for right. a puck. My kids were using marbles and they were firing them through the windows. Like they thought it was funny. But and that and so then I started playing with them with marbles. And they'd get hit here and they'd get here and they'd get hit here. And so the marble thing went away. But it was just the fact of we don't like to lose. And no matter if you're the superstar or you're the other guy, we don't like to lose. I didn't like to lose. So I had a like I said, it was a it was a very strange way that I made it, and I was never um, complacent. Um, I never thought I was going to be there. I had told my teammates I'd be done in three years. I and I never played in the minors. Like that was the, that was the thing they all got pissed at me for. You never played a game in the minors. I said nope. And but I was in the for hockey. I was in the right place at the right time. I was just going to say the so right yeah, coach. That's what it takes. I played in the right system. Yeah. I was a player that knew. Yeah. What my role was. Mm -hmm. I didn't step outside of it. And I played that from day one to, you know, the last day. I'm, so. I'm with you on that. I, I tell people, man, but I've always just just played. Mm -hmm. I, I, and that's, you know, people like, man, you don't, you don't have like a normal football player because I just walk around and meet people and have fun. And then when they, well, who are you? You look big enough to play football. And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I played a little bit and I keep walking. Yeah. Man, yeah. You, you, who you play for? And I'd be closing the door, getting in my car. I play for the Cowboys. Oh, we know you now. And I'd <laughs> yeah. be going down the road. <laughs> yeah. Because it, yeah. Don't, it don't matter. Yeah. You know, we. I'm, I'm telling you, from the grade point average on up, man, you ride. Yeah. 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 I think that, that this group <clears throat> collectively just has that demeanor of normal. Of just, yeah, yeah we're out. <laughs> hey, what's up? And everybody's like, it's yeah. 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 Okay. Not me. Yeah. I don't You're, get into it. We, I think we see ourselves as on the level with everybody. Mm -hmm. Not, yeah. not. Yeah. I played in the NFL. I played in the NBA at major leagues. I'm not above you. We're, 
I was talking the other day. We're here for them. They're not mm -hmm. here for us. That's right. Yeah. That's a fact. That's a little point, man. And you mess I with them too, right? Yeah. People are like, I, yeah. do I know you? We work somewhere together and no, I walk but, away or something. But you, sure you look like such a, nah. But yeah. you know yeah, what I mean? Then, you, you, then there are guys that are the exact opposite yeah. of oh. that, right? They need Yeah, and that's the, that's the they side, need, right? Yeah. They uh, need the glow. Yeah. They need the attention no yep. matter what. Yeah, I don't want to throw names out, but I know guys, man, that right now, they, they want still it, want somebody to, hey, <laughs> you, yeah. you're great, you're this, you're that. But I'm kind of, and you might not know it, but I'm kind of a shy person Like when it comes to what we're talking about now. I don't like to be the center of attention. You like the indirect spotlight. Yeah, that that's, that's so exactly cool. yeah. right. I really do. I mean, and, you know, if you don't know a person, you don't know that necessarily about them. But I'd much rather be sitting right on my little patio with some whiskey. Mm -hmm. Like <laughs> chilling. Of course. Yeah. yeah. Uh, just just chilling. Are we getting man. a whiskey sponsor? Hey, <laughs> we no, are now. I think I think Ed Balfour's got a whiskey company, yeah. by the way. I think it's called Balfour I mean, Spirits. There's a plug. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. That's the you know, that's the only way I, I, get I on board. Go, go about it. You know what I mean? Just just stay humble. I've always been preached from my mother to stay humble. Don't get too big. That's why it hurt me so much when she passed away, because I didn't I always knew that whip was there for me to, yeah. to keep me in check. So. Yeah. It had to be hard on you guys, though, because I know when Cowboys was there, we were right. practicing right next door. Right. Right. Yeah. And we go to Cowboys all the time to actually yeah. see you guys. Yeah. But I mean, it was <laughs> yeah. whoosh. Yeah. All the you time. know, like everywhere you go. Yeah. It but it took them a while to find the White House, apparently. Or, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah. They still don't know which house it really was. <laughs> you go right to the back of Valley Ranch and look right at the it. The old White yeah, House. Yeah. <laughs> See, we had one of them too, but it was Vinnie Paul's house. <laughs> yes. okay, Sarah, it was up on the hill over there. <laughs> Green Oaks. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> Which recently got torn down, they tell us. I know, and it was supposed to, that's not what the whole concept was. It's one of the, one of the another band members were more heavy metal guys, but they were going to open it up as a museum. And then apparently that sale didn't go through or something happened there. And so then they tore it down and now they're, you know, real estate. So Lost to history. I'll tell you what, yeah. I mean, every single... every single band that came through Dallas, they were at Vinny's house at one time or another. And, you know, he was smart enough to have an establishment over there and uh, that everybody wanted to go to there. And then it was done to Vinny's after. And so, mm. yeah, the Stanley Cup made it to the bottom of his pool. It bounced around for a little while, but it made it to the bottom of his pool. And so we, he was a good guy. Let me tell you, him and the dying, both of them were great guys. So yeah, it's uh, the whole story. Yeah, we were friends with him Yeah, on the yeah. show. Yeah. It's amazing how our, our different seasons, how ours was. We didn't have a chance to to sleep it off the day of, right? You guys had practice day. We didn't have, once our season, we didn't have practices. We were out, if you went out, you went out and just, and you knew the guys that were out drinking the night before because they yeah. were dressed in probably long sleeves or something. Right. What are you, what are you doing? Sweating out last night's party. And that's, but yeah. we didn't have that where you guys could. When we did have an off day, yeah, I'm sure we took full advantage, but you guys yeah. had those off days. So it was different for us. We were just going and going and just nonstop. But like you said, you still run into the, the, the funniness, the silly business of what guys are doing yeah. and, just, and just having those stories. I think we're able to, I think this group is able to take those guys. You talk about the upper echelon guys that yeah. to be able to chop them down to get them to the level where people can actually understand them, but not mm -hmm. this, oh, you're on the pedestal. No, mm -hmm. right? You're, we're on the same level. And that's what I think we were, this group is probably going to be good at did, doing. Did you guys see, we all hung out together on most of the teams that I was, I was on. If one went, everybody went mm -hmm. it, in New York, Patrick, you got to come to We go to, Group club, whatever. If we're out like that, we don't. Why do you say that under your breath? Oh, I'm not saying it under my breath. It is what. If, if you've been to Atlanta, you've been to Magic City. You know what I mean. If, if you've been to 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 Atlanta, ATL, yes, you have been to Magic City, and we drug everybody along with us. Come on, you're going. No, I got no. no, no. You're going. So we. Uh, we kind of rolled together. I don't know if that was the case for you so guys. It should be. It did. Yeah. Baseball, we were just more of, you had the guys that were, some families would go. So you mm -hmm. had the guys that were married, but you had the guys that had the girlfriends, but would still kind of go together. We knew which guys to go with, mm -hmm. to go out all the time. It was it was usually the same bunch. Yeah, we would all go eat, but then the ones that had family, they would go back. Or if, if not, but most of the time, be the same. Then you go out and it's the same thing. But it was usually. What's your roster size? 25. Yeah. 25. What's yours? Uh, little, 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 little. 12? Just players 15. Yeah, 52 has got to be harder. Yeah, we, yeah, we didn't, everybody didn't ride. You know, yeah. we didn't want everybody to ride. 
Yeah. You know, it's kind of, that's a lot of guys. And were, you knew which yeah. ones you could trust, too. Yeah, right? yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> Probably the, the oh, veterans is who trust oh, each other. you, man. Ooh, you say strip clubs, man. Oh, yo, you, see, you <laughs> all winning Super Bowls, too. Yeah, that's the other thing. You yeah, know so I mean? man, we, 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 we went to L.A. And I'll tell you a quick story. When we went to uh, Arizona, man, play that Super Bowl. <laughs> They had the FBI come in, right? You know, Jimmy was trying to use his little scare technique in the NFL. And, you know, we're going to have to put it, you know, when we get off the plane, the first thing we're going to do is meet with that, you know. He told it, they gave us like 20 spots. These are high crime, robbery, da 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 da. And Jimmy got this stiff look. Hey, fellas, we, we need for all of y'all to, to pay attention because I'm back there joking with Mike. Then when it was all over, the, you know, the FBI guy, you know, agent, whoever. Does anybody got any questions? He was getting ready to walk by. I said, oh, hey, hey, I got a question. Like, what, what, how do we help you? And Jimmy looking at me like, you better not. <laughs> and, I, and I'm like, <laughs> I'm looking at him like, sir, you know, let me tell you something. <laughs> Those places that you just mentioned are high, high crime, high theft, all this right there. Yes. I say, sir, could you leave, give me a list at the front desk of all those places? Because <laughs> that's why <laughs> Jimmy went. Jimmy, Jimmy. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, you said yeah, the wrong thing. We was going with the, every one of them spots. Oh, man. I, I, don't even bring that back, Harp. Don't even bring I, that No, I, I, I'm going to tell some stories. <laughs> but every city, had, has, every city had like, their spot, too. Oh, right? yeah. I mean, everybody had their, every their magic city. spot. Magic City in the... Mm. See, and you guys didn't have minor leagues either. Wait, wait, hockey, yeah. you didn't play. I did. So yeah. we had, and that's where our camaraderie's built with guys yeah. that are, I mean, our draft is so yeah. so much bigger than everybody else's. So the guys from rookie ball, which you're playing in the yeah. Appalachian Mountains, to mm-hmm. <laughs> my first full year in Florida State League, and, and we're half our season spent in Tampa, Ybor right. City. I mean, really? Mm. Mons I mean, yeah. you've got these, and then, and then you go to Tulsa. You're like, oh my gosh, here we are. Kind of like hockey, right? Yeah. Middle Western Canada. And then, then I'm here. So, I mean, you've got all this stuff that you get to go through in these little spots. That you ever roll down on Harry Hines? Yeah, some nice joints. Oh, yeah. I have. <laughs> oh, yeah. We used to stop on a, We used to fly to Love Field. We used to fly to Love Field. And we would go on the back way into Love Field. We'd stop right there. The men's well, club right there on the way. Yeah. Well, the only thing, when you mentioned the men's club, there's another spot on Harry Hines and across the street I thought it was the men's club one time right. I, when we first got here. Right. It wasn't because I want my feet are sticking to this old red carpet. And I've been hearing all about this place. I'm like, dude, what? I was like, really? This is the spot everybody the goes to? And I said something, guys. No, dude, that's about a mile down the road over there. Oh. Then, then we found the real spot. But yeah. I want to talk. But what you're talking about when you're dragging guys along, yeah. right? Bring them out with you. That's part of what we try to do, and that's what they did with us. We would always go someplace for training camp. Now they're doing it at home. But we would typically go to Vail. Yeah. And I didn't really know the concept of it until I got done and I started coaching. And we would take our we take our U18 guys to Vail. And but what, what I would always be looking for is when you get back from the rink and they're going to go walk down Little Vale there and where they're going to go eat and all that kind of stuff that they have their free time. And and when you start and you see three guys go that way and five guys go that way and four go that way, then day two you got eight guys that go over here. And before you know it, they were all walking through town together. Mm-hmm. Now you know you're getting someplace. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now we're building a team. They, they get along. Yeah. And you'd always find out the two or three guys that went the other way. There was usually a reason they went the other way that's and they exactly were usually not right. on the roster. Right. You know, yeah. so that's kind of how you originally, for us, kind of originally start to go, yeah, yeah, these, yeah, we like these guys. I, I think I, I, that's what I miss yeah, about yeah. the league yeah. is like you were talking about the group of guys and the camaraderie. I miss that. I, I, you know, I don't miss the long summer of working out and preparing. I mean, I enjoyed that while I was doing it. And I know why I was doing it. But when I think about it, man, being on the back of that freaking bus mm-hmm. telling lies about yeah. Yeah. what chick I was with the night before yeah. and all of that kind of stuff, man, I miss that. I really do. The chick you don't or think the that, stories? You don't think that the kind stories, of stories, all of it. You, you don't think that kind of camaraderie exists way. today? It does. <laughs> it does. I talked to Eric Young one day. and we get on the plane. Guys are dropping 30, 40 grand playing cards, right? That's what mm-hmm. these dudes are doing. Nowadays, he goes, I get on the plane, we'll play cards, and everybody's they're stuck in their computers. Dude, yeah. Facebook. True. Good There's point. not it's, – it's, it's, it's individualized. It's not a team anymore. And that's – and that's what you're trying what you're yeah. trying to get back to is where's this this team? Yeah. Right? Of guys going out. But you would know going into a city, hey, we're going this week. We're going to Kansas City and we're going to Chicago. All right, hey, 
we got reservations here. And you knew mm-hmm. which guys you were going with, right, yeah. and what was going on. Because they would plan ahead. Yeah, my uh, girlfriend's going. Or you knew guys, well, my wife's going this trip. So yeah, baseball, right. baseball player, you can bring your wife's going. They, you know, they don't fly with us. Only in the postseason they fly with us. They would just fly in. Right. Because it's just depending on where we, where we came from. All of that is coaches shit. My coaches didn't believe in that shit. Pat Riley, <laughs> girls, yeah. no, 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 no. Chuck Daly, those guys, they didn't. They Coach didn't Johnson went about that. Coach, yeah. Coach well, Mandrew went about that. You didn't get the opportunity uh, to, the, to, have, to yeah. the postseason. Yeah. 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 Post- How was yeah. Dick Motto with that? Coach Motto? Yeah. yeah. Shit. Dick, Dick was all about the, the team. He, he separated it. You know what I mean? It wasn't. It was us against the world. Yeah, that was his mantra. That's that. That's the thing that he preached the most. And you know, Dick. The good thing about him as a coach, he would join in. You know, at the bars, wherever we might be, he would join in and have a couple with us. Boy, but the one thing he always I've always heard that's rare. The guy. Mm-hmm. The one thing he always preached though is that if you don't get it by twelve. Get your ass home. <laughs> Get back to the hotel. You nothing know, good happens after yeah. midnight. <laughs> yeah, nothing good. That's, that was Dick's I used to disagree with right that. I, I don't know. I think some of the best things happen around 2 a.m., I'd say. Oh, my God, yeah. yes. You got to work just right. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. You, did you guys have either. curfews? Did anybody any oh, guys yeah. have curfews? Yeah, we had curfews. Ours was always so at 11. Did, only in the minor we leagues. Didn't they, but yeah. we've had some coaches in the minor leagues. He goes, I'm going to have a room check. I better check at midnight. The room better be there. No, they wouldn't care type of thing. But we never had them. And, man, do we. Well, then there'd be these dumbasses, uh, players that you you have curfew. And so coaches are smart, too. Mm -hmm. So they would say, and it wouldn't be 12 o'clock. It'd be like one or two. But he'd he'd give a stick or something like that to the guy behind the desk. And so anybody that can tell him, anybody that comes in after one (laughs) o'clock, tell me like their autograph. Like, oh, cool. Then he goes, you get to keep the stick. No way. Really? Yeah. And so he'd beg for autograph. And then all these idiots would sign it. So when the morning coach gets up and he knows, <laughs> well, we know exactly were, were you at curfew last night? <laughs> oh, yeah, I was there. Well, really? Well, you signed this thing. He, the kid would keep a lit. He, this guy came out at 1.10. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. That's what we would learn the tricks of the trade of knowing where the back entrance was for the hotel, oh, the yeah. elevators and stuff. Yeah. And people would, yeah. oh, yeah, people, there's always yeah. tricks. Yeah. We you don't want to stay, but you don't want to have a room next to the elevator. Well, we never traveled <laughs> even playing with security until, yeah. our chair th- until our chair throwing incident. We had a chair throwing incident in Oakland. Ever since then, yeah. our uh, RSA would travel with us now. You guys have those? The, the agents I don't know that what that is. shitty. It's a resident security agent for no. That's, we can take care. That's of why ourselves. security travels now because of that's the, a difference. Oh, hockey so players and baseball security. players. We can take care of our own shit. They've gone crazy with this security, security shit. Hey, yeah, though. I mean, it's, it's people. Are you gonna everywhere. take that from him? <laughs> yeah. Hey, he's gonna come on the ice with me again. That's a podcast right there. <laughs> well, hey, one of our alumni let's get, let's get these two on the ice. Yeah. You ever skate? Oh, okay. Let me ask I'll you this, Ray. Can I walk out there in my tennis shoes? Can I? Can I sure. say okay because skate. But that's probably even more dangerous. Yes. Okay, what's sure. the safest thing? Probably just not to come. Okay. <laughs> yeah. In our alumni room, we have a nice bar area and a oh, lounge yeah. area. That would be the nice Man. spot. Do they just, still make the, I know the, I ain't the dual, make it, the double bladed no, skates? Don't. They don't make runners? those anymore. No, they used okay. to make no, runner yeah, skates. But they got shoes with spikes on the bottom. We get that okay. you can kind of strap on. Track shoes we wrap. Okay. With, yeah. It, you just can't be on fresh ice. I'm surprised yeah, 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 yeah. you yeah. come. I know I wouldn't yeah. make it, man. So you I'm just the next time you watch a game, so. the, the ice you want to get on is the one yeah, that the, the, the period's over before right they zamboni it. So it's well, nice. And, see, yeah, we we, we could do something where we'll all go someplace and we'll test each other's sports out. I don't really want to get in and hit a sled or anything like that. No, 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 man. I don't even want to do my sport. I would love that, though. I like to think I can do anything but hit a fastball. Yeah. Oh, you can hit a fastball, too. As long as he ain't throwing you two of them curveballs prior and you're bailing on everything. Michael Jordan found out how hard that shit yeah. is. And it it's the hardest thing to do in sports is hit a yeah. moving object. Yeah. Yeah. Goodness, That's what right? people are like. This is No, hang on. He was talking about eye hand. When you say hit a moving object, you're talking about a moving object this big. Yeah, yeah. But it's easier the harder it's thrown, the smaller it goes. Yeah. That thing looks like an aspirin yeah. from yeah. and you have that much time to react to Am I gonna swing at this? Am I gonna move? Is it going in my ear? Yeah. Right? And it's it's every, and that's what you were talking about earlier about our, you know, coaching and being around kids. The one thing I've noticed is the speed of the games. I played in that alumni hockey game with you. Yeah. Puck came to me in front of it. I thought I had plenty of time. All of a sudden, somebody lifted my stick was gone the other yeah. way. I'm like, holy cow. How? Yeah. But seeing that, do you guys notice that? The yeah. speed of the game for at the younger levels? Notice even with hockey, right? Of how... Well, it's all specialized stuff. They have their own, they have their yeah. own personal trainers now at 12, 14 years old. I mean... But even though you're able to differentiate yourself as, a, as an NHL player to those guys that are 
that are not there yet, the speed of the game of knowing, yeah. you know, mm-hmm. tricks of the trade, right, right. that yeah. guys have. Yeah. And that's what I've noticed. The biggest thing is, especially when I noticed with hockey, just with, yeah. you know, when people go, what separates the major league players from from the other guys? It's not right. your physical ability. It's what's between your ears. ears yeah. right. That's the biggest thing. But been there, done that. Yes, experience. because of the way the game Absolutely. evolves so quickly. They're making adjustments, right? Plays, I mean, heck, they got computers. You got... Somebody did it the other day in one of the games, right? They were looking at the computer, and the guy grabbed it and just took it away from him because he missed a goal. I mean, he's yeah. sitting there thinking. That's what I think. It's just so much thinking. It just They don't play anymore. Well, the only problem, like, with the what they're teaching now, and it's so important, is skating. The only problem is, and I tell our players all the time, is, is like, when these are controlling this, there's a problem because they're skating faster, and their, their feet will take them into an area, and they'll get into a tight area like this, and they can't process it fast enough. So you guys have to think the game. And you know, they say you know, 80% is from here up, you know, I mean, it's every, but everybody can that. skate now. You know, it's great. I mean, it's a great sport. Our sport is faster and it's, you know, it's more exciting, but you know, you still I mean, have to be able like to know. You guys, Harper, I mean, the fans are right here and Mike's in yeah. your ear shooting. Hey, Harper, you suck right now. Right. And you just want to elbow in the face, right? right? right. How do you guys deal with that? ever say, Harp, you suck. <laughs> just deal with it. You know what I mean? There have been so many, so many occasions <clears throat> where, Fans are all up on people. Vernon Maxwell, I don't know if you, you guys remember this story, but he had a sick daughter. Max did. Yes. And there was a fan in the stands giving him shit about it. He polite, politely checked out of the game, walked right up in the fucking bleachers yeah. where, where the fans were. Like you say, they're very close in a lot of arenas. And... I mean, Gabe was all up on the fucking guy. You know what he told the rest of the people that were sitting around? This is for your ass, too. If you got something to say, you're yeah. going to get the same thing. Right. So it, 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 it's crazy. It happens all the time. But it's a part of it, man. When I played at Iowa, mm-hmm. when I was at Illinois, fans were so fucking close. They were thumping you behind your fucking ears. No. Wow. I'm not kidding you. Thumping like... <laughs> And, you know, of course, you fucking laugh. I'm like, shit, I don't want to come out of the game. I want to be on the fucking floor if I want to be getting fucked with by the fans. You know what I mean? So, Were any bizarre. fan bases in any of the sports any worse that you would hate to go? I know hockey's a little bit different. Was there, you know, places you didn't want to go? I don't like to go. I don't like, I didn't like to play at the, uh, the old garden. Oh. Uh, the Boston Garden? Oh, my God. Oh, and they're sneaky, dirty there. <laughs> They turn the heat up on us, like we play there. Or they freeze turn the your heat ass. up. That's exactly right. Yeah. They turn the heat up down there, and then they screw the windows tight, so you can't open them up. Or they would open the windows, like you said, and then you can't close them. <laughs> in in the locker room. Yeah, you gotta take a fucking shower. Yeah, in the change rooms, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. The football is different. We I, we love shit. Philadelphia loved it. You know, Washington Red O O S R F K loved it. Yeah, I mean they they tried their little tricks, cold water and all that, but man, it, just the game itself was so great, man. Yeah, yeah. The that, fans would um, do that. They some of them would do were a little bit more in tune. Like the Cubs fans, I thought were the worst. The worst, but by, by saying they did their homework, like you said, they would go down my family lineage and they would sit there and they're and they're creative in what they're doing. Mm-hmm. Right. But they say they, they, there's a line, right? Little, but they're creative knowledge. what you're doing. You turn around, you tip. Yeah, yeah. I like what you're. Yeah, yeah. And you and then you can mess with them. So yeah. I mean, it's but like you said, people throw stuff. Oh, you know, they crazy, do. Man. It's just, but it's. I think that's that's what I miss the most of those interactions because right, people try and do stupid stuff and just that's all you got, really. You know, you try and get them to be creative. I'm having a hard time looking at Menchie with when he's right over his right shoulder too. Like it's just, <laughs> I want to. I, I said at, at the launch party, we, cool, I'm going to bring that so you can wear it. Somebody made it for me. Oh, that's pretty cool. <laughs> you think it would fit any of our heads? Not mine. Well, it ain't fitting yours. I, I got a big head. <laughs> I can be called a big head too. <laughs> myself, I'm gonna tell you. <laughs> that's all it is. It's Philadelphia for us, man. I mean. That and the ORFK, man, they used to, you know, like I said, they would find out about you. They would read stuff the week before, or, you know, go into your, your background, and they were good. They would, they, you know, you would really think they would be caring about you. Mm-hmm. But as they talk to you more and more, you know, it was a setup. Oh. By the time the game <laughs> rolled around, <laughs> you look over to your, the section you thought was on your side, and they yeah. wearing you out, yeah. man. Yeah. Does that, does that you bother out. you, though? Like, for example, Draymond in the finals here. The fans were all over his ass. Now they have T-shirts yeah. that says Draymond is a bitch. Right, <laughs> Excuse right, my French. Right. I, I, I was watching yeah. a game last night up in uh, Legacy yeah. West, up in that area. 
And I saw a guy with a T-shirt that right. said, "Yeah, Draymond is a, yeah. you know what? Right. Right. Does that bother you? Do you think that's out of bounds in sports? I, it doesn't bother me. But yeah. I, I'm going to tell you, no, it don't bother me, man. Because yeah. I'm coming to get you. I'm yeah. gonna, not your fans, but I'm coming <laughs> yeah. to get this dude. Yeah, I'm so, yeah. to I know you live on yeah. 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 I'm coming I'm to get your just, player. You know, I just think guys yeah. are so freaking sensitive now. I'm coming to get your player, man. You know, I'm I'm I know you can be too player. personable. Yeah. When you start to, you know, if you're, your wife or your significant other is sitting next to you and sitting next to a fan mm-hmm. and that's what she's hearing, mm-hmm. is it out of bounds? Well, the, the ones I attract love that kind of stuff. So. <laughs> I, I don't know. I just wonder how. I tell, I had a cousin, I, you know, bless his heart, he's passed away in, um, in the services and. He used to come to the uh, Washington game or the Philly game, and I was sitting out, nod, this is what's going to be said and worse. Please don't get into a fight. And, uh, <laughs> you know, sometime he make it through. Yeah. Sometime he don't, but it all being fun. At the end yeah. of the day, we all shake hands. <laughs> yeah, that's together. right. You know, so. That's right. And granted, there's that the majority of the people would be that way. Yeah, he's the worst player after the game. Hey, man, good job today. But, <laughs> hey, a lot of, but think about it. We always tell people. Can I come sit at your office and sit here with a beer and yell at you for, for three, right. three hours? Right. Yeah. But I get it. It's, what, it's where we're supposed or to be. Or you're over there doing invoices. Yeah. 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 Right? That's what I was getting at right there. Or your baby girl Turn is it sick. around. Your yeah. baby girl is sick. Or your kid yeah. is sick and you got to... You know, you got to leave the house and she, she he, you know, crying for you. Yeah. And you. And you got that on your mind, but you also got this, you know, Magic Johnson. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know. So. All right, I got one more thing for you guys. And then we will wrap this up. Who are some of the guys that you would like to have on your podcast? You gotta give us time to think. <laughs> okay, we'll take time. Well, to think. I can I can go right off right off the cuff. Okay, go Shaquille. ahead. Shaquille O'Neal, uh, Shaq is a lot of fun. Obviously, you watch him on TNT. He uh, he's a personality. He's a clown. He's a goofball. He'll fall right down in the in the middle of the floor for you. Same thing with Charles um, Barkley. Yeah, just a lot of different personalities, not just sports guys, but you know, see, that's the beauty of this. this yeah, can go wherever you yeah. want. Just different people that have a different perspective than sports. Yeah, you know, which which is a lot of different people. So, high school coaches, I think, I they they don't get the spotlight and get to to tell their little part. At, at their level, it's different levels. You know, we we were fortunate enough to do do this at the highest level. Everybody doesn't get that opportunity. They dream of it. So, trying to have some you, versatility. Nate? Oh man, versatility. I'm, I'm, I, one of my guests, man. We probably got to zoom him in. Is my brother? He played for the Minnesota Vikings, the Tampa Bay Bucks. So we were family. That you know, I had a brother that played in the NFL. So I'm gonna have that brother on, and then I'm gonna have my brother Tony, who's uh. Uh, was worked for the Atlanta Police Department for 20 years or 30 years, and then he also now is a head director for the uh, Magic Security. Mm-hmm. You know, have a different perspective. And uh, then and I'm telling you, when you invite Shaq and these guys, you invite your guy. I want to come in and just be that fly on the wall. And I won't, promise you, I won't say no, but I'll be just sitting. Yeah. yeah. No, you. I mean, my daughter sings, so I'm yeah. gonna I'm gonna have yeah. her on one of my shows. Yeah. yeah. She's uh, Neo Soul. She was on The Voice. Yeah. She, uh, yeah. She can get that. That's out. your daughter? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. her. Dana Harper. Yeah. She uh she's really good. She's really good. And See, I, yeah, I just think you. she would she would be a good guest for me. Yeah. Kevin? <laughs> I guess I'm sitting here thinking, I'm thinking somebody like Bo Jackson, a multi sport guy, yeah. to be able to see beautiful. Go, go through what he what he went through, how he did it. Him or Dion. Mm-hmm. You know, the person uh-huh. personality of being able to like you said, sit here and have fun yeah. and be able to have fun with this whole situation. Just be, to hear both sides of it of how I mean, how do you balance a football and a baseball yeah. career at the same time? I, hearing mm-hmm. the stories about Dion flying yeah. from and. Atlanta to New York to play and, and then playing football or something. I mean, that's what 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 He's are you doing? What are you thinking fucking... about in the chopper right now? Are you running yeah. your yeah. What's this guy throwing tonight? What are you thinking about? So somebody like that would be I just an ideal yeah. guy just to have, that'd be the. Something to shoot for. I got to get my, myself wrapped around. It can be anything. It sure. can be anybody. Yes, you know, it can. That, that, that's yeah. the beauty. Like that, I said, that's, that's, that's where I'm kind of mm-hmm. slow with it. I, I'm just not really, un, you know, 
accepting that it can yeah. be. It can be awful. whatever you guys yeah. want it to be. Yeah, yeah. No, How about you, Luds? Well, I, especially with the time where we are right now, hockey-wise, the playoffs are going on, obviously, the Stanley Cup, but uh, this team here in Dallas doesn't have a coach, got a GM with only, you know, so I, I think a guy's like, Mike Hike is a writer, and mm-hmm. so, but he's kind of on the inside, Daryl Ray, Razor, mm-hmm. or the announcer. Oh. You know, Razor is great at what he does, and he loves talking about himself, so if he's an easy guest. Uh, no. We've had Marty Turco on, so we'll get that out there. Um, but, you know, another guy I'm going to get in here is Burton uh, Gilliam, you know, Bubba from Blazing Saddles. So he's, he loves golfing and stuff like that. And so we were just talking the other night. So he's he's all into it. But but I agree. I mean, it can be anywhere. And then, you know, the, the typical Madonnas and all, yeah. all, all of those kind of guys. Sure. Um, and they're all good. I mean, I, that's I don't I don't speak for other sports. I, I just find that hockey guys are usually willing. It, you don't have to pull teeth, even, even if you don't didn't play with them. You know what I mean? It could be somebody that I know. Uh, <clears throat> but I didn't play with and maybe not that great at fun. Oh, yeah, sure. You know what I mean? one of the first things I noticed when hockey came to the remote yet burgeoning outpost of Dallas yeah. so yeah. long ago. Yeah. These guys were great guys. It's funny. They say they say you never get a second chance to make a first impression, right? And it's funny. When we came to Dallas, people here didn't know about hockey. You know, they, they thought it was about fighting and they, they hit people with sticks. Like, we were cavemen. You know what I mean? That's mm-hmm. kind of... And, and it's funny, like they were, if you were a physical kind of player, all of a sudden they were cheering for us. Like Shane Churla, when yeah. Churla's got here. Oh, yeah. And, and you know, and Churla's was tough and he's a fighter. And, you know, we were, him and I were, we should have never been roomies. That was not a good choice, but we were roomies for the whole time he was here. And, and it's funny, like Mike Madonna, people didn't know about Mike Madonna. They were cheering for, and I'm like, what the hell's going on? You know, but that's what I mean. All of a sudden, People would know who we were, but then, but they didn't take them long to figure out. Oh no, that's the dude over there, right. the guy that's a movie star that makes five million. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's the guy. So, <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, here in Dallas, I think it's. I think what I'm trying to is like we're still around. You know, we're still here, and mm-hmm. you know, we're still in touch, and we do know other people and like to do other things. You, you know, know what the they got the option. That, Mo, yeah. Oh, yeah, every day. <clears throat> oh, yeah. Whatever you want, Mo. And he would float around during games, and he'd still come yeah. out with a couple goals and, and didn't do shit, but he would get, oh, yeah, like those kind of guys. Yeah. That's funny. At one time, Skew. so we'd go over to Troy's yeah. house. We'd yeah. go to Troy's house once a yeah. week, and we'd play cards over there. Right. And it was Tui, uh, Troy, Step, Stepnoski. Daryl was there once in a while. Yeah. And then it was Churla, uh, Russ Cardinal, and myself. Right. Troy, no fucking beer. No peanuts, no popcorn, <laughs> nothing. And he was always the house, like when we were playing. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then when it, when he was winning, the game was over. <laughs> Losing, we'd get to stick around a little more so we'd get his money back, you know. So, that's funny. yeah. But, well, but that's what you're going to get here on the Dub Network. Kevin Mench, Nate Newton, Derek Harper, Craig Ludwig. Fun is ahead. If you don't get anything else out of this today, I think you must agree that fun is definitely ahead on this thing. Thanks for watching. I'm Mike Reiner. See you next time.